This is John. He's been given the job of creating a quality management system for his company. He's done some research, but he's overwhelmed by the information out there. He just doesn't know where to start or what to include. What's he going to do? We've all found ourselves at one time or another in the same position as John, not knowing where to begin, not knowing where to find the correct information, maybe not really understanding the task or what's being asked of us. I want to unravel for you exactly what's required, from understanding what quality means for your company as well as your client, all the way through to creating your own quality management system. Here's this course aimed at. Should be anybody who wants to create a quality product, specifically small business owners, individuals interested in creating a quality management system, management representatives, people responsible for quality within their organisation, as well as clients responsible for the quality of the supplier's work. What will we be going through? The background of quality management, the history and development. Quality management isn't a fad that's just been around the last 10 years, but it could be traced back at least 100 years to Deming in the United States, as well as 1940s in Japan with the Kaizen principle Kaizen being the Japanese for continual improvement. We'll also have a look at the different styles that have spawned from these to show that the principles all remain the same. The ISO 9001 is a standard that this course is based upon. It's implemented in over a million organisations across 170 countries. This standard is based on a quality management principle including strong customer focus, the motivation and implications of top management, the process approach and continual improvement. We'll be looking at clause 4 which specifically deals with creating a quality management system and what really needs to be included. Writing your own QMS or quality management system, the sections you need to include who, why, where, what and when, versioning, referencing and archiving. Once you've created the QMS, it's no point having it just sitting on the shelf gathering dust or in your hard drive. You have to actually implement it and use it. This section deals with implementation. The actions needed to achieve the planned results, the customer requirements, customer satisfaction, responsibilities and continual improvement of the process because when you start using it you'll start adapting it and changing it for your own organisation or industry but the principles will remain the same. Learning outcomes. At the end of this course you'll be able to define what quality is. You'll know the history of quality management, the various QMS styles the sections needed for a QMS, how to create your own QMS and how to implement a QMS.